Joined now by Kava Afrasiabi. He is uh, joining us from Boston. He's a political scientist and author. He's taught in Iran and the United States. He's also a former consultant at the UN, part of the uh, Rouhani delegation as well. Let's start with some of the comments from U.S. President Trump yesterday. I'd like to play a clip and then I want to get your reaction in just a moment. Let's listen. The Iranian government masks a corrupt dictatorship behind the false guise of a democracy. It has turned a wealthy country with a rich history and culture into an economically depleted rogue state whose chief exports are violence, bloodshed, and chaos. The Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions the United States has ever entered into. Frankly, that deal is an embarrassment to the United States, and I don't think you've heard the last of it. Kava Iran's uh, foreign minister tweeted right after that it was ignorant hate speech. Uh, what did you think when you heard it? I really had very similar reaction because uh, this is demonization of Iran par excellence. Uh, President Trump uh, acted as if his entire part of the Iran speech had been written by Prime Minister Netanyahu, who has been pressing the White House hard to uh, scrap the nuclear deal, partly because he has lost the limelight of the international luster since the signing of the JCPOA, and it doesn't mind another manufactured nuclear crisis to deflect from the, you know, Palestinian-Arab impasse. Uh, but I really think that Mr. Trump did himself and the whole U.S. diplomatic machinery a disservice by this self-deprecating and self-defeating approach that uh, downgraded one of the crowning achievements of the U.S. Uh, diplomacy in the modern times, uh, namely the JCPOA, that has been uh, applauded by the international community, particularly all the signatories, other signatories to the to the deal that includes China, Russia, France, as we just heard, etc. So President Trump really finds himself rather isolated when it comes to denigrating and his intention to perhaps uh, scrap the nuclear deal. Well, let's move ahead uh, to today. President Rouhani of Iran striking back with his speech. Let's listen to a little of that. I want to get your thoughts on it on the other side. I declare before you that the Islamic Republic of Iran will not be the first country to violate the agreement, but it will respond decisively and resolutely to its violation by any party. It will be a great pity if this agreement were to be destroyed by rogue newcomers to the world of politics. The world will have lost a great opportunity. Rogue newcomers. Uh, is this back and forth name calling helpful? Well, ultimately not. But, you know, I was uh, in the company of President Rouhani at a couple of meetings before his UN speech. And, you know, he sounded rather conciliatory and, you know, presents a rational discourse on the merits of the JCPOA and why it's even in the national interests of the U.S. itself and the importance of expanding trade relations between the two countries, etc. And uh, President Rouhani devoted the bulk of his speech today to the theme of moderation, both at home and abroad, and uh, re-emphasized the initiative on uh, the General Assembly resolution against violence and extremism. And it's really unnatural for President Rouhani to, you know, use this kind of language which, which is forced upon him because he's basically a moderate politician with moderate sensibility, yet finds himself cornered by this uh, verbal offensive by President Trump that, uh, you know, reinvokes the image of access of evil and Bush's era and is quite counterproductive, not only to bilateral U.S.-Iran relations, but also regional politics and uh, world peace. Kava, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us and your analysis. Appreciate it.